Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of a Benamar Milio 243. So as we start the walk round on the driver's side of the vehicle, the first point you get to is how you hook your vehicle up to electric. So if you're charging it at home or you're on your site, you get your hooker blade, lift the collar, hook the motorhome up first, then the site and do it in reverse order when unhooking so that you're never walking around with a live lead. To fill it with water, you need to buy yourself a hose pipe and some hose pipe ends, as it's mainly just a brass tap on site. And this is where the water would go on board, so it's a lockable cap, and all your doors open with the habitation key, which is a small black key. Flatten end of the hose in there, and you can either wait until it overflows, which means you've got a full tank, or you can look on board the main control panel on the vehicle and see how much water is in your tank. Here you have your gas locker. They don't come with these bottles. This is an option that the, the previous customer of this vehicle fitted, which is gas low. Normally it would be two just conventional bottles that you'd have to get yourselves, but these are a refillable system. So as you can see on the top, you've got gauges. So you've got traffic light gauges, orange, green, orange, and red. Red indicates it's full, it's empty. Green indicates it's full. You can turn it on and off via each bottle with the plus and the minus on the stop cocks on either bottle to turn them on and off when you travel and you do have a changeover valve so the little diamond here the little diamond just here you can choose whether you want it on this bottle or that bottle green at the top indicates that you've got gas coming through but to fill the system you go to your local LPG centre being it fitting connects on there twist it, pull the trigger back to pressurise the filler and then press and hold the button on the display until simply it stops. It's got an automatic shut off on this system so when it's full it'll stop and then you can just disconnect the filling pipe. Lying underneath your van now, your fresh water filler is just above us. This is how you drain off your fresh water so you'd open this tap and that'll drain off your fresh water should you be winterizing it in the winter or you've taken on a source of contaminated water you just simply want to drain it down open the valve and this will drain off your fresh water tank you do have two fridge vents here as well and then behind the back driver's wheel is where the waste water outlet is so i showed you where your fresh is this is your dirty water which is just here pull the handle and you can drain off your, your dirty water so normally on the way out of your site you drive over a grid get rid of this before you start traveling because it'll add weight to the vehicle and it'll use more fuel carrying dirty water around where you don't need to so deposit your grey water where you can on your site as you're leaving and leave this open a little bit when you travel home to rock any loose water out and obviously make sure in the winter it's fully drained off so leave the tap open to avoid the water from freezing in the fresh water in the waste water tank garage at the back is where you'll find full-size spare wheel and tool kit so there's everything in there to change that spare wheel ladders carpet it's heated by the heating system on board it's got 12 volt at the bottom and a 240 plug at the top you've got your winder for your bed so you can raise your bed and lower it depending on what you've got in this space so if you've got a bike you may have to raise it slightly if you haven't you can just lower it down so that it's easier to get into the bed on an evening and you've also got a handle here which is for your steadies so there's just clips on there and you can put two steadies down so one this side one the other side of the van and it'll steady the back of the vehicle out on the back of the van you do have your reversing cameras high level brake lights at the top fiamma pro c bike rack on the back so to operate that pull the reel down Pull the reel down, put 
your bikes on here. These do move depending on how big your bikes are. Tie them through the wheels. And then for the crossbars of the first bike and the second, and then we do recommend putting a bike lock around the frame of the bikes and the bike rack just to stop them being stolen if left unattended. Parking sensors on the bottom. Garage door as well, we've already been in there so you know what's in there. And then you do have your cassette. To so operate your cassette, again, habitation key opens all the locks. To get the cassette out, there's a little blue clip at the bottom. You need to lift that up, slide the cassette out of the van. You can now wheel it to the designated disposal point. Or you can carry it. And then to empty it, it's as simple as remove the remove this blue cap, press the blue button at the back, pour the contents of the cassette out at your designated disposal point, which is normally beside your toilet block. Put some water in, give it a rinse, and then go in with a cap full of the chemical, which can either be blue or green. Into here, and it's good to go back into the van. vent for your heating so just to make sure that's always obstruction free and there's nothing going to catch that and you do have your external gas point so you can get a fitting to go in here and you will just need some jubilee clips and some gas orange pipe for your barbecue which can be a free standalone barbecue or kadak turn the tap on and it'll use the bottle on board to provide the gas without carrying a spare and you've got a cold water feed shower at the bottom there. At the passenger door, you'll find the location for your diesel filler, which opens with the main ignition key. So you need this key to open the lockable cap. And you do have a 19 litre at blue tank on, which just cleans your catalytic converter out at a certain temperature to avoid buildup and carbon. A full 19 litres will go over five and a half thousand miles, but you will get a light on the dashboard when it needs add blue. It'll come between the temperature and fuel gauge. Simply pull in the petrol forecourt. You can buy it on the pumps now. It's about 150 a litre. Or you can buy a drum of it. Keep it in the garage and just top it up. But let you know when it needs it. And, it'll, and you can put it straight in. Tire pressures can be found here. So five and a half bar front and back. The two cab seats are heated. So you push the buttons in. And you get heated seats, driver and passenger. Leisure battery is underneath here, at the back, in the box. Engine battery is underneath the compartment in the car floor, and your bonnet release is on the side of the dashboard. So as we look over, as we have a look underneath the bonnet. Got your various fluids so screen wash above the, the driver's headlight three tabs and lift that cover off you can get access to your power steering fluid your coolant and then next week you have your brake fluid oil filler and dipstick for checking your levels and then for giving or receiving a jump start earth off here positive off there and then you do have your weight plate, so three and a half ton gross vehicle weight. If you were to put a tow bar on, you can tow two ton behind the van, which means you've got a five and a half ton train weight. To work your Benamar 12 volt control panel, if you're hooked up, you'll get this light here, which means you're receiving mains 240 volt. You've got your master switch here, which turns the vehicle on and off. And then you can turn your 12 volt system on, which is just this button here, which runs all the lights, the pumps, so you turn your 12 volt on, turn your pump on, making sure that you've got enough water on board, which I'll show you how to check in a moment. You've got your awning light, which is the light on the outside of the vehicle. And you do have, going down the side, one of the trailer, which is your leisure battery reading. Take the hook about to get a true reading of your leisure battery. One of the truck, which is your cab battery. Fresh water is this one here. When that goes into empty, it'll go red. And when the other one goes red, it means the waste's full and it's time to drop your waste water. So that's your control panel. It's very simple to use, obviously on off, 12 volt on off, pump, 
which you've got to have on for your taps, toilet, shower, exterior shower, on and light if you're sitting outside, leisure battery reading, vehicle battery reading, fresh water reading. So to operate your digital Truma CP control panel, to turn the system on and off, you press and hold to turn it off, press it once to turn it on and it'll come on, and then to get into the menu, you just press it once. You'll notice you've got a thermometer with it in a van flashing at the top corner. If you press enter, this is how hot you want your vehicle. So you've got all the way off in the summer when you don't want the heating, or you've got all the way to 30 degrees in the winter when it's very cold. So once you're happy, so if we say 27 degrees there, that's how hot I want the inside of the motorhome to be, I'd press enter. And that'll save that at 27 degrees. Now we've got a thermometer in some water. This is how hot you want your water. So if you don't have any water on board, you'd have it on off. 40 degrees for showering. 60 degrees for doing your dishes. But it's entirely up to yourself how hot you want your water. Or you've got boost, which will turn off your heating and prioritize your water first. But for this, we'll just say 60 degrees because we want the heating to run along with the water. Next, you've got what source you're heating the water and the vehicle off. So you've got gas. So make sure your gas bottle's on and it's turned on. You've got mix one, which is 750 watts of electric and gas. You've got mix two, which is... 1850 watts of electric plus gas so you'd use mix two in the winter if you're away and it was really cold use a mix two will boost the vehicle up the temperature because you're using both sources together then you can turn it over to electric so you've got electric 750 watts el1 and you've got el2 which is 1850 watts of electric don't waste your gas if you're on a site, unless you're away and it's really cold and you're using mix two for the first 10, 15 minutes, then allow electric to continue to heat the motorhome and maintain the temperature. Because if you're on a site, you've paid your site fees after all, you'll not want to waste your gas. Then you've got your fan in the top right hand corner, so eco or high or boost, this is just a 12 volt assisted fan. So eco will use less 12 volt high obviously uses more fan speed so it's going to use a little bit more 12 volt and boost uses full power on the fan which is going to use the most out of the 12 volt battery sleep with it on eco because it's a lot quieter than sleeping with it on anything else if you're going to sleep with the heating on in the winter you've got a timer so you can time the heating to come on and off just the once though clock in the middle and then spanner, you can go all the way down to reset and to reset the control panel if you ever get a warning triangle in the middle. Reset, preset, click again and it will restart your control panel. And then to turn off, press and hold and it will say off and it will completely turn itself off. To operate your Avtex telly, you've got a master switch for the TV in this bottom corner here. So make sure if there's no light coming on the little blue light, you push this button in and then you can turn it on with the remote of standby from red to blue. And then all you need to do is when you move sites, you do have to retune your TV and it's very simple to do. So on the remote, press the settings. So press the settings, go down to the three dots, all settings, enter. Down to programs, down to program tuning and settings, enter. Auto tune, antenna, next, next. And it'll start and find as many channels as it can. Please bear in mind it does go very quick and you think it might not tune. It gets to about 40% and it starts bringing in the channels and it'll slow itself down. And that's how you'd use your Avtex TV. Obviously your booster does work off a 
I should say yeah, TV does work off an aerial, which is a booster here, so you can boost the signal of the aerial. It's just a f fixed flat aerial on the roof. But this button here, you can turn it and boost the signal. 5G Wi-Fi was an option. And you do need a data only SIM card, so you can go to your phone provider and ask for a data only SIM card. And it does go in the actual device. And on the back, you can see your passcode. So if you take the back off, you can see the passcode. So you can pair all your devices through the 5G. But you do need a data only SIM card for this to work. Without the SIM, you don't receive anything because it's connected to an aerial on the roof which boosts the signal up to 10 times that you receive out of your inbuilt phone Wi-Fi aerial. So your phone's got a built-in aerial for the Wi-Fi, your 4G, 5G from your phone provider. This has got one on the roof, which is 10 times stronger. And you've got a 9-net box as well, so you can put a SIM in that and connect Bluetooth and control your heating and hot water remotely. So in the kitchen, you do have two gas burners, one electric, which the electric is this one, which will only work when hooked up. And it'll indicate with the red light here that it's on. And you've got six different, different settings on the electric one. And then on the gas, Once you've turned them off, if you do allow them just to cool down before you put the glass lid down, otherwise there is a chance you could shatter the glass. But you do have a light and an extractor above the hob. Twelve volt and two forty plug there, and then underneath is where you'll find your grill. And under your grill, you've got your oven. You may want to just take these out when travelling. Little cupboard there. Cutlery drawer and you've got your gas isolation valve taps. So these are mainly used for when the vehicle is annually, yearly, habitation serviced any problems with gas turn the bottle off to be safe but you can isolate each of individual appliances by turning so they're all open so you turn them on the sides and that would close off the gas appliance that you think you're having trouble with but like i say any problems with gas to be safe if you do ever have a gas leak turn the bottle off storage drawer Big storage drawer for your pots and pans, pushing the catches in to lock them when traveling so that they don't open up. Slide out racks in here for storage. And then you do have a microwave. So the microwave will only work on mains electric. So it'll be 800 watt microwave on board. And then below you do have your fridge freezer. So I'll show you how to use this. So in the middle here, you put your control panel. So you turn it on and off here. A will stay illuminated and there's a picture of a plug. A stands for automatic energy selection. So it picks out the best source that's available to the fridge. So we're hooked up now, so it's gone to hook up. We've also got the gas turned on, but it knows not to waste gas when hook up is on board, because hook up takes priority. So if you're on a site or if you're at home, pre-chilling, have it on hook up. If I was to then take the hook up out the vehicle, it will switch over to gas and self-ignite by itself. Or if I was to start the engine, it would switch over again to 12 volt from the engine when the engine is running only and it keeps it like a giant cool box so it's like a travel mode so it'll keep the shopping nice and fresh at the temperature it was previously set at so it's got to be pre-chilled beforehand on either gas or electric and you can travel with this and it'll just keep it nice and fresh 
If you want to turn it off automatic, you've just got to press this button here and now it's on mains by itself because you've selected that. Battery by itself, code six, failure, loss of 12 volt because the engine isn't running or you can self, or you can self select gas. Please note with the automatic energy selection mode, it waits 20 minutes before lighting on gas once you've turned the engine off as this is a safety mode in case you have forgot to turn your bottle off you pulled into a petrol forecourt to fill up with diesel, the last thing you want is this sparking in a petrol forecourt. So you just have to manually select it for the first 20 minutes before bringing it back to automatic. Here you have your temperature, so five being the coldest when pre-chilling. Once you have put your shopping on board, turn it down to three or four max so it doesn't freeze the shopping. And then you can turn this on and it stops the temperature of the fridge and freezer from con condensing this control panel here and stops the doors from sticking with the rubbers one thing i will say about the fridge is when you don't use it you've got to leave the doors open so if you're parking it up on the driver parking it up for a couple of weeks don't leave the doors shut because it traps the air in and it'll start to smell so underneath both You've got these little toggles and you just put the toggles into the hinges and what that'll do is it'll keep the doors open so air can circulate in and out of the fridge and freezer box across the back of the van you've got a transverse double bed with tv points here so you can fit your telly onto there so there's a 240 a 12 volt and an aerial point just here two individually switched reading lights and then you do have storage so push the catches down on all your overhead lockers to open and you do have storage across the back storage underneath the steps to get up into the bed large wardrobe obviously if you raise the bed up you can put a ladder on as well which is in the garage There's loads of storage in this van of all your bits and pieces you need to store when going off on holiday. So to operate your Fedford toilet, ensuring that the pump's on, if you press the blue button at the back, you get your fresh water flush. Mm -hmm. So if you always put a little bit of water in the toilet first before use and then before you use the toilet if you open the blade so you need to slide this to the right that opens the trap door into the cassette allows you to use the toilet give the good flush after use and close the blade back to the left if you've bought any blue obviously the blue goes in the cassette like I explained from outside but sometimes it can get blue and pink together Obviously, with this van, your fresh water flush is from the main fresh water tank. But what you can do is you can dilute some pink liquid with some water, spray the bowl, flush your toilet, and it does the same job. It cleans the to toilet bowl and it gives a fragrant smell in the washroom. Mm. In the back down here, you do have a indication when the cassette is full. So that's shown green. When it goes to red, it's full and it needs to be emptied. But making sure that you always do it in that routine that I've just shown you it means that you're never going to go outside and you think why can't I get the cassette out because if it's open like this you won't it's got to be closed because the mechanism is engaged in the top of the cassette and you've got some toiletry cabinet underneath the sink and a bowl and then in your shower making sure that your shower screen is tied back before you travel Got a hanging reel for your wet towels, wet coats. Let them drip dry in here. Shut the door. It's the smallest place in the van, and with the heating on, your washroom over time will get really warm, so it'll dry anything out. And when you winterize, it's always good practice to unscrew your shower head from your hose. Lie this hose down in the shower tray with the mixer taps throughout the van open, so you don't open the shower, the hand basin, and the kitchen tap to stop any water sitting in any pipes this is just showing that your hot water system's working so 
when the water comes through, which it is, it's getting really warm there now. So your hot water system is working as it should. Obviously on your dry screen and a blacker blind on your windows throughout the van. So to operate your drop down bed at the front, there's a little switch here, making sure your lights are turned on because that's how it's wired. So you've got to have your lights turned on on the panel, which is your 12 volt switch on this one. And you'll be able to bring the bed up and down, ladder in the garage to get on, curtain for privacy, which will come across. And you do have a, so you push the sides of the light strip and the light will illuminate for the people in the bed. And then you can press and hold and put the bed back up. Take your pillows off, you can leave your duvet on, nothing too thick and too heavy because it does if it's too heavy it might blow its fuse because it'll think someone's on the bed and it's just safety so nothing too heavy uh, and you can put your bed back up and underneath your locker behind the driver's seat if you remove the cover you'll see there's a nut up here and that is the bottom of your bed motor winder so if you ever need to manually wind the bed up or down, you just connect to that and wind the bed down or up as it's your feel safe for your bed system. Underneath your side facing bench seat behind the passenger seat is the location of your charger. So your charger charges your leisure battery when hooked up. You've got your trips on mains 240 here so if you trip the vehicle out try here before you try your main site or if you think you're not receiving power the best thing to do is trip the vehicle out if the vehicle doesn't trip you're not receiving power if it does you are receiving power and you've got your 12 volt fuses which are all listed what they do on top and underneath the fuse but carry some spare fuses with you just in case a fuse does blow now we get onto your boiler so your boiler there's two jobs, supplies the vehicle with heating, either gas or electric, and supplies the vehicle with 10 litres of water in your boiler at any one time on either gas or electric. It's very important that you drain off the 10 litres of water inside the boiler, especially over the winter. Not so much when we've got warmer temperature, but when we're experiencing freezing temperatures, the water in the vehicle must be fully drained down. So you do the fresh, the waste from outside, you open, open all the taps inside, and then you want to open the boiler. So the, this is your boiler drain control, and it's called a frost start, a frost valve control. And what that does is, at three degrees, there's a button on this side here at the bottom will pop out and it will eliminate the 10 litres of water when not in use. At three degrees, so it's, if it senses three degrees, it'll drop the water to avoid it freezing. But what I would do is when you're parking it up in the winter and you're not using it, physically check or if you want to open it yourself, all you need to do is turn the diamond, the button pops out and you'll hear the water draining out underneath the van. Do it without the pump on and let all the water drain off. Let all the water drain out, open the fresh and the waste, open all the taps within the van and then turn the pump on for about five seconds and that'll blitz the water through the pump so that any water that's sitting in there is out the taps and in the waste and gone. Otherwise, what you can be doing is you can be sitting the water in the pump over the time you've put it away over Christmas and it could be freezing and damaging the water pump. And then when you want to, when you want to shut it back off, you just turn the diamond, push the button in and that has closed the boiler. You can now fill the vehicle with water, shut all your taps, bleed the water through on the, on the cold and then go to the hot, bleed it through the hot and then and it'll cough and spread and make all sorts of noises because it's transferring the water from the fresh water tank that you've just put in with a hose pipe in the boiler coughing and spluttering until it gets 10 litres in here and then you've got a free flow of water from the hot side your boiler is full of water and pressurized and you can start heating the water if the button for ever one reason doesn't stay in put the heating on first and heat the area up because it's just cold so put the heating on, give it 10 minutes, and then you'll be able to push the button in at the bottom and the and the button should stay in, allowing you to fill your boiler with water.
But please drain your boiler down because it's not covered under warranty. It's your responsibility as a consumer to avoid frost damage. And that's how you would do it. So check it's pop, the button's popped out. Great. If not, turn the diamond on the top and get rid of the water in the boiler. And then this just shows your rear view camera working. So it works in drive and in reverse. And obviously now I've put in reverse... Your main reverse cameras come on the head unit as well. So you've got a driving camera where you can see all the time. A rear view camera. So you can see more of the bikes on this one. When in reverse and the beeping in the background is just your parking sensors. But you can always see the back of the van. So it's great for when you're trying to overtake or switch lanes. Just remember that the camera doesn't work as quick as you're driving.